Sign Paintings for the NHS is installed on the corner of Roman Road and Grove Road, it's a crossroads, um, and it's placed next to the entrance to Wellington Green, uh, which is a small park in East London. I started installing on the 9th of April, uh, very late at night, so I didn't see anyone while I was installing it and it was pretty dark, so I imagine the first time that people saw it was on the 10th. And that was maybe a dozen, 15 signs, quite small. And it came out of the idea of really being or feeling compelled that I wanted to do something to respond to what was happening with the lockdown and trying to think of, think my way out of where I was, but also show great appreciation for the NHS and other key workers, um, essential services that were continuing whilst uh, we were in lockdown. The NHS especially is something that's very uh, dear to me because my entire family, my parents, uh, grandparents, um, were involved or have been involved in the NHS. And my um, youngest brother, um, actually, is the company he works for, supply ventilators to the NHS. Um, and I've always thought that you can tell how civilised a, a country or a nation is not by what they achieve, perhaps, or not by how they project themselves, but it's how they look after the most vulnerable in society. It's how they look after those who potentially can't help themselves. And that is what is, for me, so um, important about the National Health Service, the NHS. Um, it is that they have been doing this since they came into existence, which was the 5th of July, 1948, and its main purpose was to make uh, healthcare accessible. Um, but it was to be accessible to everyone, not just those who could afford it. Um, so it was based on need rather than the ability to pay, which I think is exactly how healthcare should be. You should be able to be looked after, not because you can afford it, but because you need it and you need that help, you need that support through and by other people. And a society that can do that is, is, is a whole society. And the signs themselves really come from contemporary events and they um, reflect what is happening on a daily basis. And because they're painted each day, if the news changes or um, if things shift, then they also can reflect that. They can change and shift. And so every night I'll go out after dark and I'll install new signs, I'll install new signs that may say something positive. But equally, the signs might point out things that aren't particularly working well at the moment. For example, um, needing more testing, uh, needing more uh, personal protective equipment, PPE, um, pointing out the, the risks to the healthcare professionals who are caring for us. There is an uncertainty to the work, um, which is I feel is a, is a true reflection of where we all are, the uncertainty of how long the lockdown will last, how long the pandemic will, when, you know, when we will have a vaccine. Um, and also it could just dis disappear in the same way that it appears overnight, the council could come and take it away or other people could take it away. Um, it perhaps will last as long as the weather allows. Hello, it's Peter Liversidge here. Um, I am just uh, introducing this second part uh, of the video, which is a, a more of an introduction to how to make, uh, or how I make, uh, the, the font for the sign paintings, but also then gives you an introduction of how um, fluid that can be. It's much better that if, when you're trying to make um, the sign paintings, that you're very super relaxed. So if you need to, just um, uh, copy what you're going to write and just allow it to, to fit into the... To, you'll know instinctively how big the letters have to be for the piece of card or piece of paper that you have. Um, I would suggest uh, thinking, actually, when you're painting, think of a famous cellist, someone like uh, Julia Kent or Yo-Yo Ma. Think about how, if you imagine how they hold uh, their bow and how that bow comes into contact with the strings. Think about your brush in the same way. So there's a, lots of, a lot of flexibility in your wrist 
and a lot of movement in your wrist and the majority of movement comes from your elbow down to your hand so it's not a body action it's actually a, a, a lower arm action um, if that is such a description um, so the idea being say for example one of the more difficult letters an S um, always start at the top of the S keeping uh, the first line that you make horizontal um, with the orientation of the paper and then start at the top and then just again let your wrist make that make that S shape. One of the things you can do to save paper is instead of using paint straight away you can just use clear tap water and get half a dozen dozen pieces of paper and practice your letters and what's great about that is that every time you practice those letters you can allow that to dry and then you can reuse that piece of paper to practice maybe the second half of the alphabet. Anyway, good luck. Uh, I look forward to seeing, well hopefully seeing, um, what you come up with. Thanks. Bye-bye.